In this video, we're going to make a draw bar for my Laguna 1216 lathe. For those of you that watched the pizza cutter being made, you saw that the uh, Morris taper on the Jacobs chuck by itself would wander out on me. I tried to finish off the end of it, uh, but any kind of side pressure or any pressure seemed to allow it to walk out. So the answer is to make a draw bar. So I have a 3 8 steel rod. You could also use threaded rod for this, but since I had the steel rod, it was easier for me just to go ahead and um, uh, put threads on the end of it. So it was 3 8 and um, the threads were uh, 3 8 by 16. So I first put the threads on the one end, um, the 3 8 by 16, and then would look and see how long the thing had to be after I threaded it. So I cut the rod and again threaded the end of it. And we also uh, needed to make something to hold that in, uh, in for the lathe into the lathe so it wouldn't walk out or, or come out. So the end of the lathe on the head that I have has got a round uh, almost uh, sleeve like uh, deal on the end of it. So I would make a kind of a holder for the thread and I would put an insert into this uh, wooden, almost um, almost like a bottle stopper end uh, that would hold fast on that end sleeve that's on the, um, the lathe. And the insert would also be 3 8 by 16 to match everything else. So the end of it right here, the bar would go through and you can see that there's a hole in the sleeve on the end. That's where we'll make our bottle stopper end if you if you call it that. On the other side where the Jacob Chuck and the taper is, the bar comes out and would thread onto the rod right here. Now the Jacob's Chuck itself in the Morse taper are threaded inside and of course 3 8 by 16 and that's what we need to attach the one draw bar into. Then the other side uh, we cut off and measure. So basically I just put the rod in the vise. I had a um, die and if you use this make sure you secure it to the handle and to speed it up, I just went back and forth, put a little oil on it to uh, make sure the threads don't catch and chip out. Um, basically just worked its way down about a half a turn and then back it up and then a half a turn and there we have the threads and then the Jacob Chuck goes right on. So then on the lathe end of it, we thread the rod into the Jacob's chuck in order to get where we want the other end to be. Thread in, put it in. I made a, um, a small end for it, but I didn't like it because it really didn't match the lathe and it really wasn't large enough either, for my liking anyway. But I measured the end of it and then cut the threads like we did the other one. And I got a piece of African blackwood, which turned out to be the hardest wood that I've turned yet. This thing was hard as a rock. But I started out by drilling a half inch hole in it for the insert and then chucking it up keep it in the chuck and then just slowly working my way down. You can see this thing is chipping out almost powder 
and then uh, I wanted to measure it because I wanted to put the insert or have an insert to go into that sleeve on the other side of the head for the lathe so it would seat down and uh, wouldn't move around and it would keep the rod centered all the way through it. So I got a little indentation on it and took the um, took the whole whole thing off to get it up or to size it up. Thereby I didn't disturb any of the um, the alignment or anything and then started a little more and it fit well and that's kind of what I wanted with it. So then we started working down uh, the whole um, top I guess you'd call it or the end for the draw bar and again this stuff is hard as a rock. You can see this thing just powdering off it didn't get to the parting tool to where it started getting some kind of uh, shavings to it and even then it wasn't much but I just keep working this thing down and I get a carbide cutter which seemed to do a little better but the carbide cutter was interesting. This wood was so hard, it's almost like it burnished it as it was going through. You can see it almost shining, turning um, from that dull into the shine. So I grabbed my roughing gouge again and uh, just started working. I wanted to round that end off, actually both ends, but I wanted to round that off because that insert is where it went into the sleeve. Uh, I sharpened my parting tool. Actually, I sharpened uh, everything before I went into this. You can see some shavings coming off, but they're uh, very short. And again, this thing was hard as a rock to, to try to part out. And I wanted to make sure I had enough room so I didn't go straight in. I uh, kind of had the width of the parting tool almost twice the width just to make sure that I didn't have any grabs or anything. Then I took uh, the carbide tip again and started rounding the one end off and finishing up. Uh, the the total sleeve itself you can see it's it's kind of shining but the chips are flying and just kept working it down and working it down I wanted it kind of semi egg shaped I didn't want anything square or anything that could catch or even if a hand or something would come in contact with it there wouldn't be anything to grab so I wanted a kind of egg shape if not a little more on the end of it and I worked it down almost to where it was parted off and uh, one mistake I made is I should have sanded it and polished it but um, it didn't take much to take it off of the end and I took a little razor uh, blade and just cut it and it came right off. So I opposite mounted it to round off the, the end of it and again I should have polished and, or sanded and polished this beforehand because at the end I did the um, Oh, that back quarter, 20%, I did it by hand. But um, right here, I'm using the carbide again, just to round it. And uh, I got it pretty much where I wanted it. 
and I wanted to take that nib off of it to get it completely round. And again, this stuff is hard as a rock. You can kind of see it burnishing. But I got it done, got it to set, and I used 80 grit sandpaper, and it was like sandpaper in a rock. You can kind of see that there's not a whole lot happening here. It took uh, quite a bit of sanding to uh, get this thing done. But I sanded and sanded and sanded and sanded on it. And actually, all I think I did was burnish the thing. I'm not sure if I sanded a whole lot with it. You've got to see the sandpaper. There's not much on it. But I got it to where I wanted it, and I took some 320 on it, or 220, and then some 400 to finish it up. And then we wanted to put the insert in, so I did it uh, kind of as I always do with the glue. I measure it measure both the um, epoxy and the hardener to make sure I get a, a good um, epoxy. Always give yourself the best chance that you can get even though sometimes it may not matter but uh, you're always better off giving yourself the best chance. So after getting it measured then I take the popsicle stick and uh, mix it up real good I like the popsicle stick, it'll, it'll really scrape the sides and the bottom and allow you to get a really good mix on it. And we got that done. And I used a bolt for the insert, a 3A16 bolt of course. And I put the insert on the bolt in order to thread it into the wood. Now the half inch is just about the size of the thread. There wasn't a whole lot of um, thread to actually bite into the wood because it was really hard for it to bite into the wood. The wood was so hard. So I initially did exactly this. I put the bolt into the insert before the epoxy was on it and threaded it into the, um, I had a little bit of, of uh, epoxy on me so I got some uh, denatured alcohol. But that's kind of how I threaded it in, is I made sure it was square, took the wrench, bottomed it out on it, and then just screwed it in. And it was pretty rough going. This thing is just almost not a lot of thread into this wood, but this wood is not a giving wood. <laughs> this thing is hard as a rock. Anyway, got it in. I left the bolt in. Um, I'm not real sure why, because the epoxy hardened with it had been, a, had been terrible to get out, but I left it in. You can see the epoxy um, dried up. It's yellowed. It get, again, it gets real, real hot. You can't hold it, and then it'll cool down. I usually wait way longer than it cools down. I actually waited the next day and took it out. Took the bolt out, and then the rod itself, I just inserted the rod and just threaded it in, bottomed it out and it's ready to go. I did not put any epoxy on it, um, but there it is mounted with the uh, Morse taper and the Jacob's chuck on the Morse taper, and it fits really well on the other side where the sleeve is. It centers it really well. There's nothing dragging. Um, worked out really well. Turned out good. That's the draw bar for the Laguna 1216 lathe uh, that I had. Uh, again, it turned out uh, really well. I uh, appreciate everybody stopping by and looking. Uh, please give a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. 
and please keep in touch. More videos to come.